So here's a little quirk for Costa Rica and pretty much every country in Central America. You don't flush the toilet paper down the toilet. You actually have to put it in a basket in front of you. And my children, like every other child, found that quite challenging, as did I, just quietly. So that's something to watch out for, but you get over it very quickly. G'day, I'm Tom, and I work for the corporate traveler business here in Flight Center Travel Group, and I've just been on a G Adventures National Geographic tour with my family of five. So as a parent, you wonder what's it like taking your kids to a country like Costa Rica and what are the things to watch out for? Well, I guess the good things about Costa Rica, it's very safe, the people are incredibly friendly, the water is safe to drink, which is brilliant because in Central America, a lot of the countries, the water is not safe to drink. So that was a worry that was taken away from us very early on. You can brush your teeth, you can drink it, it's all that sort of fun. I think the amazing part about Costa Rica is the wildlife and that probably the biggest highlight that jumped out at me was on the second night we were there, we went for a night walk um, in the in the in the rainforest, in the cloud forest as they call it, which was incredible. And it's a beautiful, serene, quiet place, despite the fact there's people walking around with torches. And the one thing that the kids and I wanted to see was a sloth, uh, which are unique to Costa Rica. And so we were walking around. They don't see them that often. And we were lucky enough on that night, uh, as we heard the whisper go around on the radio, that there was a sloth up a tree. So we scurried on through the through the bush. And the guides are incredible. They find these things we could barely spot it. But sure enough, right up high on one of the, one of the massive uh, cloud forest trees was this sloth hanging upside down asleep. I wasn't convinced it was a sloth. I thought it was just a lump of wood until it poked its head out uh, and looked at everyone. And it was the most amazing experience because that was the one thing we wanted to see when we went to Costa Rica and we saw it on the second night we were there and it was absolutely mind blowing. So the family and I were very keen to go and visit Costa Rica. And of course, the first thing we wanted to look at was should we do a tour or should we do it ourselves? And we decided very quickly that the most obvious thing to do was to do a tour. And the best people to do the tour with was G Adventures. Now, when we went to G Adventures, they explained to us that there were two styles of tour they offer in Costa Rica. One was their G Adventures tour, and their other was their G Adventures National Geographic tour. And the main difference is being the National Geographic tour having slightly higher quality level of hotels, breakfast every day, itineraries tailored a bit more for families, which was excellent. They thought more about the family inclusions, and we decided very quickly that we would go on the National Geographic tour, which was the right decision. So breakfast was included daily, and that was typically, you got a choice of a local style of breakfast or an American style of breakfast, which the kids really enjoyed. They tried both, and they thought things like rice and beans for breakfast was quite fun, uh, rather than having cornflakes and milk. But some days, of course, they preferred cornflakes and milk or eggs and bacon. But they were able to see that every day across a buffet, which was brilliant. And then when it came to lunches, um, generally when we were driving, if we were on the road that day, the CEOs would say to us, we've got a couple of choices for lunch. We can go here or here. Uh, we would decide as a group as to what we would prefer to do. And then they would send us a, me a menu over WhatsApp, which we could review while we we're on the bus. The kids could look through the menus, choose the food they'd like. Some days they wanted to have the local fare, um, but other days they just felt like they wanted to have a burger. Uh, and that stuff was always available for the kids and they were quite happy they could pre-order it. So that when we arrived at the restaurant for lunch, the food was generally ready within five minutes. They always got a Coke, so pretty excited about that. Um, and it meant that there was no worrying, no hunger, no kind of what are we gonna get for lunch today. It took away a lot of the fear that the kids might have about what they might have to eat that day. So accommodation in Costa Rica on the National Geographic tours, locally five star properties was where we stayed. I'd say probably on a global scale they were somewhere between four and five star. Beautiful properties, some on the beach, some in the rainforest. We stayed in a volcanic national park which was the kids' favorite hotel by a country mile. All of the rooms, we had a room for the kids and a room for the adults, which was brilliant. So the kids were in triple share, I've got three children, and then we had uh, myself and my wife in a, in a, in a double. Um, all the rooms were en suite, uh, all the rooms had, as I said, breakfast daily, they were serviced daily, so the kids felt like they were adults in their own rooms, which were brilliant. Interconnecting where we wanted them, so we could always check on them if we needed to, uh, so there was never any fear about that. And the transportation, we were on a minibus that seated up to 20, but there were only 10 of us, so that was great. So every kid had pretty much two seats to themselves. There's Wi-Fi on, on all the minibuses so they could plug in and play their games, go on their social media, whatever it wanted to be, which means they could stay connected to the outside world, which for the teenagers was really, really important. Uh, and they could have a little sleep as well because there was plenty of room to stretch out. So plenty of comfortable transport with Wi-Fi options, which is great. There was no day where we traveled more than four hours on a bus in a day, except for the very last day where we did five to six hours. Having said that, anytime there was a journey of, of more than an hour, we would always stop every hour, 
for a bathroom break or on demand if someone needed to use the bathroom. And all the stops always included a chance to have us to have a stop, use a bathroom, get a snack. Uh, the transport, as I mentioned, was comfortable. No toilet on board, but very easy to stop off and take care of that bathroom break along the way. So the G-Adventures Nat Geo tours come with plenty of inclusions on a daily basis. So every day there was an activity or two included in the price of the tour, which was great. And anything that wasn't included was made very clear to you at the start as to what it would cost before we went away and how you'd have to pay it, which was generally in US dollars. And the, the CEOs would tell us well in advance of which days we were doing those and how much money we would need to have if we wanted to do those. And they took care of that for us, no problem. So the inclusions generally included some pretty exciting activities for kids, things like zip lining, horse riding, adventure parks. There's lots of exciting activities for kids, as well as some relaxing ones, like for example, uh, spa baths or uh, mud bath treatments. Uh, they're all included in the itinerary. The additional, additional things would typically include things like maybe some beach activities, parasailing, etc. The guides would advise us a couple of days in advance as to what the activities would be, and we would make a decision as to whether we wanted to do those activities. And then upon arrival, if indeed the kids had changed their mind or any of the adults had changed their mind and no longer wanted to do the activities or indeed wanted to do them because they said the other day they wouldn't, there was no problem in the flexibility of that. We were able to add those on or take those off upon arrival at the activity. Uh, some great things about Costa Rica. The wildlife is like nowhere else you'll ever see in the world. So that's incredible. It's very different to home and the kids loved that. I thought that was brilliant. It's a very cheap country. So when you do, when you are out and about off the tours and you're out in the shops and the streets or you're buying meals yourself, it's a very cheap country. So your dollar goes a long, long way, which is great. And one other tip I'd give if traveling to Costa Rica, to get there, you pretty much got to go through the United States, whether it's LA, San Francisco, Chicago, Denver, wherever it may be include a stop in the US on the way there or on the way back. We did, and it was brilliant. It's a great way to break up the trip and a great way for your kids to see another country uh, that is very different to Costa Rica again and enjoy another part of the holiday. So it doesn't cost you any more. It's included in the, in the cost of your airfare. All you've got to pay for is what you're paying for when you're on the ground in that particular place. So several years ago, I took my kids to Europe and thinking they'd love Europe because I love Europe. Um, but I learned very quickly that what kids love about going on holidays is doing fun activities, eating ice cream, and essentially doing things that kids wanna do. And so I learned in taking them to Costa Rica that the best thing to do with kids on holidays is get them back to nature, get them outside, and get them doing things that they find fun because then they engage a lot more in a country. And the more we did that, the more they loved it. And Costa Rica was brilliant for that. There's plenty of activities outside, plenty of things that are different from home, and plenty of ways they can engage with the local people, including speaking the local language, which is something you don't get when you're holidaying English speaking countries. So I learned that keeping that, keeping your kids outdoors, making sure they can do activities they'll enjoy, that's when they really start to engage with you as a family, but they also start to engage with the country that they're in. I'll give you three tips for parents taking your children to Costa Rica and probably many other countries. Number one, buy yourself an eSIM for each child before you leave. They're very cost effective. We paid less than $10 US for two gig of data for the kids, which they didn't even use the whole time we were there, which is brilliant. They could live between Wi-Fi. So buy an eSIM and, and download it before you leave. Number two, download the WhatsApp app on your phone before you leave Australia. You can't download it when you're overseas because it sends a verification code and that's how everyone communicates in Central America. So make sure they have WhatsApp on their phone. That's how we communicated with the children. And the third thing is take a laundry bag for every child and make them pack it in their bag so they can keep their dirty laundry separate. I know that sounds obvious, but it was very, very hard to keep track of the kids' clothing throughout the travels. So one thing I learned after my last trip I took the kids overseas was that I wish I'd got them to read up about the destination a lot more before we went there. So we did that before Costa Rica. Watch wildlife documentaries, read up about what the country's about, learn a couple of the phrases of the local language, so a little bit of Spanish. So when we landed there, they at least had some idea what we were doing there, what it was all about, and could maybe be pushed forward to maybe make an order or spout a few Spanish words in front of the locals, which really changed the way they enjoyed the country. As always, the best thing about family holidays is getting a chance to finally engage with your children because work is busy, life is busy, and the best way to do that is to get them out to nature, uh, get them involved, get them being kids. And we certainly, in Costa Rica, we got a great chance to do that. And it meant that I could actually behave with them like I'd love to do, which is being a big kid myself and have a great time on holidays. And that's the one thing I love 
about going on holidays with my family. So that's it. Thanks for watching my video about my family travels to Costa Rica. It was an amazing trip. And if you're thinking about going on holidays to Costa Rica or indeed anywhere, consider G Adventures. They're an incredible tour operator. And if you've got any questions at all, feel free to reach out. If you've been on a G Adventures tour, feel free to comment here at the bottom. Thanks so much for watching and uh, hopefully we can go on another adventure soon.